Ever since the DT Swiss Star Ratchet hub design patent expired, a lot of wheel manufacturers have been adopting this robust design. In this video, I'll tear down the entire rear hub, including the free hub body. I'll show you how everything works, and then I'll put it all back together step by step so that you can do your own service on this hub at home. Now, I recently built up the Specialized S-Works Crux, and I'm running the Logos Epo K wheels on it. But in the process of servicing the rear hub, I kind of screwed up, I'm not proud to admit it, but I actually damaged the axle itself. So I actually have to replace that today. In your case, however, you can use this video to swap out the star ratchets if you want higher engagement. You can use it to replace the cartridge bearings in both the hub and the free hub assembly. And you can treat this video as a general instructional video if you ever need to service any part of your rear hub. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is to drop out the rear wheel. And in my case here, I'm actually gonna remove the cassette as well, just to keep things a little more straightforward. And because this job can get a little bit greasy, I'm also gonna remove the uh, disc rotor as well. So again, even though this is not a DT Swiss branded hub, the inner workings of this hub are exactly the same. And just to be absolutely clear, this is the older style DT Swiss Star Ratchet system, which a ton of hubs use. It's not the DT Swiss Star Ratchet EXP system on which DT Swiss still has a patent. So first thing you wanna do is remove the end caps on both sides. These pull out with fairly little resistance. And they'll just pop right off like that. The drive side has an end cap as well and that'll also pull right out. And at this point, you can actually pull off the free hub body. That'll pull straight outward. There's a spring on either side of the two star ratchets, so make sure not to lose those. You might need a little flathead or some kind of pick just to pull that out. There's also a little spacer in here, a metal spacer, and that'll slide off as well. So now that we're partway through the disassembly, we can kind of see into the hub. It's probably a good time to do a little explainer. All the hubs that feature the DT Swiss style star ratchet system have a very similar anatomy. The hub is essentially a long cylindrical shell with inner flanges to prevent the bearings from being pressed in too far. On the drive side, there's also a threaded ratchet nut, which threads into the hub shell and acts as the interface for the star ratchets themselves. On the portion of the axle protruding from the drive side, you've got a metal sleeve that acts as a spacer. On top of that, you've got one spring, and then you have the pair of ratchets themselves, followed by an additional spring that sits between the star ratchet hub and the free hub body. The free hub body also has inner splines that mate with the outboard half of the star ratchet, and inside of the free hub body are two additional cartridge bearings with a metal spacer between them. Finally, the end caps press onto the axle itself, and the end caps are what actually interface with the bike's fork or frame. To hold the wheel to the frame, the through axle skewer is fed through the non-drive side and threads into the drive side dropout of the fork or the frame. Okay, so that quick little anatomy lesson, it should make sense now how we're gonna punch these bearings out. Now this is what the rear axle looks like inside of the hub. There are these little flanges whose faces meet up with the inner race of the bearings. So to get the bearings out, if you're careful, you can actually just use the axle as a punch to get the bearings out. Now for the non-drive side, since the axle kind of protrudes from the uh, face of the shell, I actually want a little spacer. So I'm just using a 27 millimeter socket here, which kind of fits perfectly on the outer face of the hub shell. And then my preference is to use a hard plastic mallet like this because it's soft enough not to damage the axle itself, but it's harder than a rubber mallet. So it'll give you enough impulse to knock the bearing out and just give it a few taps. and the non-drive side bearing should slide right out. Now before I can punch out the drive side bearing here, I've got to remove the threaded ratchet nut, which kind of locks that bearing into place. This is where I actually like to clamp this tool into a vise so that I can just use both arms to get the required torque to remove the, uh, the ratchet nut. So drive side bearing is still inside, ratchet nut needs to be removed. I'm gonna place the wheel so that it engages with the ratchet nut. And then these can get really, really tight because as you pedal, you're continually tightening this nut. So, so keep in mind that it is a standard righty tighty thread because sometimes as you're going to remove this, you might start questioning, is it actually a reverse thread just because it's so tight? And then you can use the wheel itself. Oh man. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm actually turning the vise here. Mm. Ugh. There we go. Well, that'll do it. Okay, so here's a decent shot of the ratchet nut. There's actually a little seal on here that will come off as you unthread the nut, so just be sure to keep that. But what you can see is that this, uh, this whole inner shell here will unthread. And so this comes out like so. Again, this is the part that actually interfaces with the star ratchet. You can see the inner splines there. So now the bearing is exposed enough to where we can punch it out just like the non-drive side. So then just like before, you can use the axle itself to punch out the bearing, but just give it a few taps and the drive side bearing should pop out pretty easily. Like so. 
Okay, so now's a good time to give the entire inner workings of the hub shell a good clean. In theory, the center of the hub itself should be pretty clean. I think if you're getting dirt and mud inside the middle of the shell, there's probably some kind of issue there. All right, so I will be replacing all the bearings in this hub shell with some uh, Enduro bearings XD15 ceramics. I actually got a set of these with the Logos wheels when they, uh, they sent the demo set over. I just haven't had a chance to actually get them installed. Now in your case, presumably you'd be replacing these bearings with fresh ones. In my opinion, you don't have to spend a ton of money on a bearing press because at the end of the day, all it is is a threaded axle that allows you to apply a very controlled compressive force to the bearings. What I will say though is having a bearing drift set like this makes this process a lot easier and a lot more straightforward. So because the hub bearings are a standard 6902 bearing, I'm going to grab the 6902 drift. The press itself again is just a threaded axle with some handles on the end of it. The drift is really the part that makes this job a lot easier. So this will sit flush onto the bearing itself and press down on the outer race with even pressure. This is the part that will encourage the bearing to go in straight every time. Now I have another video, it's actually the highest performing video on the channel. But in that video, I showed you how to replace cartridge bearings in a hub without any special tools, basically with just a homemade press. So if you don't have a bearing press like this, I'll link you to that video because that totally applies to this part of the install here. All right, so when we're installing bearings, basically anywhere there is a metal to metal uh, contact point, you want a thin layer of grease. So I'm gonna grease the inner face of the uh, hub shell where the outer edge of the bearing is going to be press fit. And I'll just do that to both sides since eventually we're gonna install both bearings. Now, one thing to note is that these particular Enduro bearings have the same high quality seals on both sides. Not all bearings are like this. So if you do have a bearing where there's a seal only on one side, make sure the seal is facing outboard so that it can do its job protecting dust and grime and moisture from entering the hub. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we do here. I'm gonna press in the drive side bearing first. I'll place the drift onto the bearing. And then I'm just gonna put an additional spacer on the other side. The reason I'm doing that is because this bearing is set in pretty deep into the hub here, and I just don't want the handle to hit the uh, outer face of the hub. That's gonna go in like so. And then on the back side, same kind of deal, I'm just gonna grab one of the bigger drifts that'll sit flush over the actual hub shell itself here, like so, and then thread the other handle on. All right, then we're just gonna snug everything down, but before we start cranking on it, just wanna make sure that everything's concentric. So make sure that the bearing is sort of lined up flush with where it needs to go. You kinda of see that? Make sure on the back side the uh, supporting piece is flush to the face of the hub shell. And once you're pretty confident everything's lined up, you can go ahead and start to press the bearing in. So you can see the bearing pressing in, nice and smooth. At some point you'll, you'll meet like a sudden jump in resistance. That's how you know the bearing has met up with the inner face of that flange on the hub shell. So at that point you can back off and you've got the bearing pressed in as far as it needs to go, like so. Now for the other side, don't get too excited and press in the other bearing immediately. Recall that for this type of hub, the axle itself is flanged. The axle actually has to go in before you press in the opposing bearing. But again, because we're gonna have metal on metal surfaces, not a bad idea to grease the axle itself. Uh, there's really no need to grease this inner part because nothing's gonna be contacting that. But anywhere the bearings are going to be touching, you definitely want a thin layer of grease. Now I do believe DT Swiss has like a special grease that you're supposed to use for the hubs. I typically just use Park uh, HPG1, their high performance grease for all hub overhaul stuff that I do. It seems to work fine and I haven't had any issues with it. Okay, so I've got the axle greased. Just recall which side is the drive side. Now this is the non-drive side. I already pressed in the drive side, so I'll push the long side of the axle through. Like so, ooh, nice perfect fit. Now on the opposing side, you'll notice that the bearing drift, the inner diameter is often not gonna be big enough to clear over the through axle itself. So a bearing drift won't actually help me install this bearing all the way. It turns out that the actual um, ratchet nut tool fits perfectly. So I'm gonna actually use this to tap in the opposing bearing. This face here, mates up perfectly with the outer face of the bearing, which is how you wanna press in a bearing. Now, of course, you have to support the hub on something that will allow the axle to pass through. So I just find that setting it you know, on the edge of a workbench works fine. Again, like on the opposite side, at some point you'll feel like a substantial jump in resistance. That's how you know that the bearing has hit the inner flange of the hub shell. 
like so. So right there, noticeable change. That's how you know that it's all the way set. So with both bearings tapped in, you can give it a spin and it should feel really nice and smooth. Now one thing to note here, when you're reinstalling the ratchet nut, this is actually directional. You wanna make sure it goes in the right way. You want the beveled side to go towards the bearing and the flat flush side to face outboard. I really hope it's called the ratchet nut. I've been saying that a lot in this video. It's a nut that you screw in and it interfaces with the ratchet. So even if it's not called the ratchet nut, that's what we're calling it. Then of course, we do need the specialty tool. This is the one specialty tool that we need to install this. Go ahead and slide this over the axle and it should thread nice and easily into the hub shell. If you want, you can put it back in the vise and um, crank down on it. But again, it's gonna get tighter and tighter as you pedal. Okay, and then don't forget to install this. Again, the outer portion of this is metal, so I'm gonna grease the back side of this and the outer edge. The inner face of this uh, gasket is actually rubber, and it's meant to mate with this little ridge on the free hub body itself. And so that's gonna do a pretty good job keeping out moisture and, and dust and grime and stuff. I'm actually gonna show you how to replace the bearings in the free hub body as well. But you'll notice that there's this metal sleeve on the inner side between the two bearings, which will make it difficult to get a punch on one of the faces of the bearing. So what you can do is stick your fingers in there and just push that sleeve over to one side. So for this, I'll typically use like a short extension for a quarter inch driver. You can go out and buy actual punches that are meant for this, but I would tend to advise against using like a really thin flat blade just because it's kind of like a sharper edge. So because I press that sleeve over to one side, I now have access right here and then of course you wanna work your way around. So after you feel some movement on this side, move it to the other side, and then just kind of work your way around to punch out the bearing. Typically the free hub bearings will be a lot smaller than the main bearings. And that's what one of those looks like. And then the spacer is here. So that's, we just punch both those things out. Then you can go ahead and flip over the free hub. Just work your way around and it'll eventually pop out. Clean out any old grease. Make sure that the, uh, the faces are nice and clear. Put a fresh layer of grease on all the surfaces where the uh, bearings are gonna touch. You can actually go ahead and use the ratchet nut tool. Place the bearing in there. You could actually use this to punch that bearing in. And again, you'll feel when you meet resistance, when it hits the, uh, that inner flange, that it's fully seated. Uh, on the opposite side, don't forget to put the spacer in first. That's just gonna float around in there until we get the bearing pressed in. In my case, for this side, I'm actually gonna use uh, a press just because I have it. So I've got the 6802 drift. That'll sit nicely in that bearing so this all goes in perfectly straight. If I didn't have the press, I wouldn't hesitate to just tap it in. I don't think it's a big deal, as long as you're careful, Make sure it's going in straight. In this case, I'm just gonna use a press. It makes quick work of this. I don't have to really think too much. Okay, so there we go. We have both sides pressed in. The uh, sleeve is sort of right there, concentric with the bearing. It might take a little bit to work that into place so that it feels perfectly concentric. Uh, if that sleeve is loose and it's kind of flopping around in there, that means you haven't pressed the bearings in far enough. But in our case here, Everything's lined up nicely. We can put the hub back together. So we're gonna slide on the little spacer here, followed by a lightly greased spring. The larger diameter end is going to face towards the bearings. The ratchets themselves, obviously you want the sides with the ratcheting face to be uh, facing each other so that they engage. Flat sides, of course, on either side. These are the same, so it's not as though there's an inner and outer one. So these will both just slide on. And then inside the free hub, you've got the other spring, again, with the larger diameter of the spring making contact with the bearing and the smaller diameter of the spring making contact with the uh, ratchets here. So the free hub body will just slide on as one unit. You might have to align the uh, splines of the ratchets if they're, if they're not going in, but just twist it a little as you push and they'll engage. Just kind of give the wheel a spin and make sure everything kind of spins freely and smoothly. And we're looking pretty good. And of course, the last thing you want to do is reinstall the uh, hub end caps. These are directional. There is a drive side and a non-drive side. The shorter one is going to be for the drive side. The longer one is for the non-drive side. Just press on the end caps. They should go on with little effort. And then on the non-drive side here, we'll put on the longer end cap. Like so. 
All right, so there you have it, a full teardown and rebuild of a DT Swiss style star ratchet hub. Recall that DT Swiss's patent for this technology has recently expired. So that's why we're starting to see this star ratchet hub design on a lot of wheels these days. There may be some minor differences from a true DT Swiss hub to some of the other hub designs, but in my experience, they're all basically the same. All stuff to do is to reinstall the cassette, put the wheel back on the bike and you're good to go. And then of course, replacing the bearings in the front wheel is even more straightforward because you don't have to deal with the free hub. The front wheel basically just follows the first half of this video before we started messing around with the free hub body. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll try and do my best to get back to as many as possible. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.